Right, hi. Just over a year ago, I made a video about my gambling addiction. Uh, now, recently, that video has been getting a fair few more views and a few shares, actually, uh, which is kind of what's prompted me to make this video today. I wanted to speak about like where I am now in terms of my gambling addiction and how it's sort of changed since then, because obviously it's been nearly a year and a half since I made that video. So I kind of wanted to do a little update on that. Uh, I realised that the reason I haven't done like any updates since is because obviously I want to centre this channel and this channel is kind of centred around other videos, especially like um, like oriented around my like asexuality and stuff and speaking a lot about that. And I don't seem to see it as like a, like something, a channel where I talk about like my personal things like the gambling and stuff. Um, but seeing that that video actually got like a bit of recognition recently and you know I've had a message or two from people and you know people have shared the video I thought that I'll do a little update of uh, how it's changed since then because I feel like it's important because it has changed a lot and then I'll give some sort of like advice at the end especially seeing I've been through this uh, you know again it's just my subjective opinion and advice it's nothing objective but it might help some people if you are a similar boat or you've clicked on this video because you feel that you need help or something I've been through it and it's 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 tricky <laughs> uh, especially if you have a certain mindset but to give some backstory uh, about when I made that video last, uh, I was a gambling addict completely. Uh, I was spending money I didn't have, despite being the age of 19, which is quite y young, because obviously the illegal age of gambling in, uh, to gamble in the UK is 18. So I was quite young uh, to do it, <coughs> excuse me, and have that. But I was doing all sorts of uh, different gambling. Uh, mainly it was online. Uh, I did bl I played blackjack a lot, roulette. Um, sports bets etc all different forms but I was doing it on the daily I was spending uh, money I didn't have daily on stuff like that to obtain more money um, but obviously it doesn't work like that you know you don't see a poor bookies uh, that you know their gambling sites are there for a reason to make money and they're up because they can make money for it that's you know we're the losing people and we're the people that are stupid we're the customers if it is and what we're buying from them is essentially nothing. <laughs> um, so they're essentially getting free money. Um, but anyway, um, I stopped gambling. Well, I, you know, I don't have that. Let's just say, let's start this off. But I don't have that urge anymore. I don't have an urge to uh, put money, deposit money online and start playing roulette. I don't have that urge at all. I don't have an urge to play blackjack. I don't have really an urge to place any sports bets. I might do like one or two sports bets per month or like, like there was the Cheltenham horse racing festival and I placed like one or two bets on that like just two weeks ago or something just because a couple of my housemates did and it was just recreational it was nothing like I needed this to win or anything it was just like a little little bet like that which is fine you know in when you've got control over that uh, whereas I sort of like lost control before it was so something that was always on my mind I always wanted to do that and I always, like, perhaps when I went into a shop as well, I'd always have an urge to, like, buy a scratch card or a few scratch cards. And that became a serious, serious problem. And the, when it became a problem was I realised uh, when my mum found out how much I was actually spending. Um, she uh, borrowed some money for me uh, for something. I can't actually remember what it was, but it was, uh, it was last year. And she wanted, um, she needed my account info uh, to pay me back the money. And she was going to, like, pay me back the money sooner than... Uh, I was, you know, actually going to get it. Um, so she just went. Uh, I live obviously at university, whereas uh, she lives back home, where I usually live uh, during the holidays, etc. Um, and then she went through my drawers and stuff to try and find like a bank statement so she can get my account info, so she could pay for, um, like, pay me back, shall we say? And obviously she saw because the bank, my bank statements go to like my house back home because that's where I obviously lived well that's where I lived during uh, during the holidays and stuff and that's where I lived before uni so obviously all my letters and stuff go back home so I don't get them here at uni uh, so she saw like everything that I was spending basically when she looked at my account info and like wanted to send me money and then she refused to send me the money because she would just um, which is completely understandable I respect her so much for that and you know that was totally the right thing to do at the time um, because she saw that I'd spent so much money and money I didn't have on these sites. And she, you know, she, she came down to visit one week and she said, like, we need to have a serious talk about this. This isn't, this isn't right. What, what the hell do you think you're doing? And I was like, yeah, you're right. But it's not as easy as thinking 
like that I'm gonna stop it I need more than that uh, and then I sort of it's, it's a bit weird how this actually happened but I started uh, when gambling one day I discovered uh, the idea of poker I decided discovered the game of poker and I got really into it um, and then I discovered videos online about poker and how to get good at poker and uh, professional poker players and I was just like huh how cool would it be to be and right at, the, at this point I thought like poker was a form of gambling it essentially is to some people it's a subjective thing um, some people believe it is some people believe it isn't it's cause, because the, people can be professional poker players you know people can win at the game consistently and live on the earnings they get from it um, so that's why some people you know there's skill to the game is basically what I'm saying whereas there's no like skill to like uh, no, there's not necessarily that much skill to like roulette it's betting on a number or a colour and if you're lucky enough that will come in whereas with poker you can like you know see what the opponent's doing uh, you can sort of from their bet sizings and like how they uh, when they bet and stuff and the strength of their hands and stuff you can just determine what they have and it's sort of like yeah you there's a lot of skill to it and I got hooked and suddenly look because I got hooked on this idea of poker and you know I was doing really small stakes I was playing really small uh, stakes poker so I wasn't spending that much money on it at all um, I really really enjoyed it and although like I was ultimately at the start like everyone would when they'd taken up a new hobby I was a losing player, like I was losing money through this. Over time, I uh, eventually became, you know, quite good at the game, and I became, to, uh, I started to win money on it. And um, then this took off. Basically, this this little notion stopped me from gambling anything else because I went from uh, thinking. So my mindset had changed. Just like, yeah, this actually requires skill, and you can win money. Whereas I was just like, wait, well, why am I playing roulette? Why am I playing blackjack? Why am I doing sports bets when ultimately a lot of this is just down to luck, whether they come in or not, you know? Uh, sure, you may argue that there's some strategy for sports betting for certain things. Uh, that's understandable. I completely understand where you're coming from. But ultimately, a lot of it is down to luck and uh, taking a risk. Uh, a lot of that, you know, poker is down to luck sometimes, you know, how the cards come out for sure. But there is a lot of skill involved and there's reasons why the, the same people do well in, this, in poker tournaments consistently and consistently because they're good players. If you're a bad player, you just won't do well. Even if you get dealt the best cards, you just won't do well. You need to apply skill, which you can't apply. You know, Anyone can sit at a roulette table and go black and win money, whereas everyone, not everyone can give it, be given the same cards and deal with it in the same way, you know what I mean? So suddenly I was just like, why, why did I play these in the past? Um, there's no skill related. To, so I just took up poker, poker instead. I started playing low stakes, as I said, and then built that up and up until, you know, I was gaining money through this. And because I was getting a better, I was becoming a better player, I was learning a lot more about the game. I actually moved into this place, which I live at now in university. And the person I live next to is a really, really good poker player. He's actually like uh, part of the committee at the university for the poker society. Unfortunately, I don't go to that university, so I can't join that. Uh, I go to a smaller university in the same city, so I can't join there because I'm not part of the university. Um, but yeah, so I learned a lot through him. And because he's part of the committee, he, uh, we hold, he holds poker games here so I can join in this house because obviously I live here. So I've been playing that and doing really, really, really well and like be getting quite good results. And it's been fun. Because, so I essentially still gamble if some people say that poker's gambling. Uh, you can, I can understand where you're coming from, but it requires a lot of skill, you know, and that's the thing. So suddenly, like, my mindset had completely changed, basically. Um, suddenly I perceived these games as all down to luck. The ones I just, like, roulette and the blackjack, all down to luck. And I thought, what is the point? Like, what is the point in spending money in these sort of things? when the overwhelming odds are that I'm going to lose that money. Uh, it's never going to be in my favour, otherwise you know, bookies wouldn't, wouldn't do that. They would never put odds in your favour. So what is the point in betting on these, betting, uh, on these sort of things if you're going to lose all of the time? You learn in poker like about profitable spots and profitable scenarios to be in. If you get, like, say if you go all in before any of the cards are dealt, uh, if you have a, a pair of aces, um, shall we say, which is the best hand, starting hand in poker, uh, and you get it in against, say, somebody has two eights, which is a pretty good hand, 
But if those two hands come up against each other, uh, there's an 80% chance that your aces are going to win. Okay, there's an 80% chance. Like you can see five cards in poker in Texas Hold'em poker, and there's an 80% chance that the aces will win the hand, and there's only a 20% chance that the eights would win. Okay, and you learn about profitable things like this, profitable like scenarios, like when to get cards in, etc. And obviously, if you think about if you're going to win 80% of the time there, you're going to want to get the money in. You are. You just are. That's just a profitable thing, isn't it? Uh, you know, it's, there's still a bit of a risk there. But ultimately, uh, four out of five times, you win that pot and you'll get double your money back. Okay? You'll get the money from the other guy if he puts it all in. Whereas, obviously, uh, there's never going to be those scenarios in roulette or something. You know, with roulette, if you bet on red or black, you'll get, you get, you put, say you put a pound on red. Um, there's not a 50% chance it's going to land on red because there's red and black tiles, yeah, but there's also a green one, so it makes which is the green zero, so it makes it less than a 50% chance that it's going to land on red, but yet you only get double your money back. Um, so if it does land, that is. So essentially, it's not profitable. It's not profitable if you look at it like that at all. So I've sort of learned this sort of mindset, and it's you know it's quite mathematical and it's quite. Um, um, Difficult to explain, but hopefully you understand where I'm coming from there. Um, it's not as easy. My advice, hugely, is, and I understand if you are going having, if you do have a gambling addict like I do, or some sort of addict, it's not as easy as someone saying this needs to stop, and you going, yeah, it does. I'm going to stop. I understand that. Like I felt the exact same in the sense that it was just always in my head. I always needed to go onto these sites, just like with smoke, like how people get with smoking and stuff. You know, you just feel like you need to have that cigarette. I've never smoked a cigarette in my life, but I, I understand, you know, how it can be addictive, um, just like it was with this. I still, despite my mum saying this, you know, I still wanted to go on these sites and spend my money on it and see what I could do. Oh, another factor that I want to speak about is I was very, very lonely last year. My life was very, very different. Um, I wasn't as social. I didn't do as much stuff. So during the day, I did have time and did have free time to go on these sites. Um, I had a messed up sleeping pattern, much like I do now. You can probably see it's getting light outside. Uh, it's currently uh, about half six in the morning, I believe. And um, like I've been awake since two-ish, <laughs> or half two. And it's just, it's silly. It's it's silly. And I'm going to be awake all day as well. You know, I, just, I don't sleep as well. But, um, but anyway, not <laughs> enough about that. Um, Last year I had a mess up sleeping back, so when I was up late at night as well, I'd play it. And uh, I didn't have as much as a social life. Um, whereas this year I do, and I, I socialise a lot with my house. And also with poker, when people come around to play poker, I've met a lot of people and I've made a lot of friends through playing this, this game um, that you don't at a black, with blackjack, or you don't with, because you just play against the dealer and then you go away. Whereas you can make friends at poker, you can talk about poker, because it is essentially like a sport. Uh, you know, there's there's professional poker players that you can talk about. It's like, oh, did you see when this guy um, um, beat this guy in a pot or whatnot? Whereas, obviously, it's not the same. It's not the same with blackjack or roulette. So I've made friends through this, and it has become part of my life for sure. And it's something I feel really, I really, really, really do enjoy. And it's definitely a huge hobby of mine, and I, I owe it to the the, the game of poker uh, for getting me away from this gambling thing for sure. Because it made me see that these games are all going to be luck. And ultimately, I'm going to lose. Ultimately, if I keep putting money into it, the odds are not in my favour to win. You know, you know, I'll win a, a fair bit of my money back, yes. But ultimately, I'm going to lose. That's just inevitable. No, that's... So just the stats that I've learned from poker has made, have made me see that. And it would be the same for everyone. There's no... if it because it's down to luck it's inevitably going to be the same for everyone whereas you can't say that into poker you can't say you're going to lose at poker because if you get really good you're going to win at poker you just are if you get into profitable spots there's people that aren't going to be as good as you and you're going to win and that's why you get professional players and that's why uh you can say you know people do well in tournaments consistently because they're better than other players just like somebody like roger federer is very good at tennis or um, Cristiano Ronaldo um, scores a lot of goals in football or you know just like that and yeah so that's where my mindset has changed so my advice honestly is to 
um, perhaps perhaps find a hobby that isn't like that, you know, uh, because obviously I, I took up poker, it is sort of still the gambling thing, there's still money involved, and I think that's why the transition occurred, because it is, it is in a lot of terms, not very big transition, it's still essentially putting money on the line and trying to win money, so in that aspect, like, yeah, not, not as much need to occur, but if you find a hobby like football or something, just to just to like make give yourself a different mindset to, towards this thing. I'm not sure if that makes any sense at all but if your mind's not always on it because my mind was always on it especially because I was quite lonely and I didn't have much to do and I had a lot of spare time then you're going to want to play it a lot <laughs> and it's always going to be there it's going to be there spending more money more money uh, if you've got other plans or you get you have a social life or you pick up a sport or pick up another hobby then you're more likely to focus on that um, instead so yeah, hopefully that somewhat helps. Uh, and I said it's quite a long video for such a small topic really, but I really do appreciate um, if you watched it this far. Uh, thank you for watching as always. I'm sorry it's not like a normal style video, well not, not about like asexuality or whatnot, but I hope you enjoyed it anyway. And I'll speak to you very soon.